more fees for you versus the cost of generating less fees, obviously, which is probably what you're going to sell. So I don't know, I'm not smart enough to understand the dynamic there, but it would seem to me that it would be more um, you know, prosperous to sell the higher low product. I know that the SEC has said that they want to focus on broker dealers having the same fiduciary standards in terms of disclosing their conflict of interest associated with their fees as investment advisors do currently. So I'd love to mix for you and just you on. Well, let's let's play open the kimono for a second, and uh, let's talk about the fees because that's really a big issue. And um, quite honestly, the daily NAV fee load is actually higher. To the, the, let's talk about the profit model for the sponsor. The sponsor makes a lot more money. Uh, we have daily NAV programs. We have uh, non-daily NAV programs that uh, have a uh, fee load. Commission fee load, and we also have public REITs in our system, and we also sell products that we don't manufacture, so they're not our products or kind of open architecture. So let's just walk through the fee structures. Uh, an asset management fee on an infinite life daily NAV deal over a 30 year period is about $800 million if you raise $3 billion. A, so it sounds like it's a lot lower because it's only going to be a trail, and the, the advisor only makes a 1% fee, and it doesn't feel like it's a front end load. So it's a lot better to put more money into the ground. That's interesting, except for the fact that you're also paying a platform fee to the folks that are selling it, and the asset management fees on six billion dollars of levered assets is sixty million bucks a year for thirty years. It's a lot of money in the present value. It's hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars for the sponsor. It's a very good business. It's a different business than the conventional non-traded REIT, which has a five to seven year life. And yes, Bill, you're right. They pay a one-time seven percent. Commission. So the upfront commission is a lot better, but it's one time. It's not every year. And the sponsor doesn't get paid every year. The sponsor gets paid only for that five to seven year period. So the absolute present value of fees is lower on a conventional, from, from our standpoint as a sponsor. So any of you who want to be a sponsor in the audience, just think about it for a minute. And then there's a third component. You can also sell a non trade agreed, conventional non trade agreed with no load. You don't have to charge a commission. You can sell it at 93 cents or $9.30 on a $10 share. And the advisor can hold that in a rapid account on Fidelity or Schwab or anywhere else. And the 7% commission is gone. And they can charge their client their 1% asset management fee, which they do anyway on the daily NAV programs. So we're actually seeing more of that, a lot of that. Probably in our system, we'll do about $2 billion this year with no commission at all. Uh, the SEC likes that. Uh, the broker dealers like that because their advisors are not paid a commission and it's an RIA type structure or, or a wrap account structure. And uh, we also see very little traction in the NAV program. We have it. Um, it's performed terrific. It's made a lot of money, about 16% return. At the same time, big problem. Nobody wants to buy it because they don't understand it. They don't understand how to use it. The advisors who are used to selling it don't do wrap accounts. So we have to find a whole new series of people. It, as Jeff said, it opens up a whole new market. So what it really does for this industry, it gives us a chance to fish in a new pond. And it's a different strategy. There are long live daily NAVs and short live daily NAVs. So the fee loads, I think it's relevant, honestly. I think there's going to be guys who want a one-time commission. There's going to be other folks that want 1% a year. But if you're holding it for 10 years, it's cheaper to pay an upfront commission, 7%. And the other thing you have to realize, all these commission structures are graded. That means if you buy a half a million dollars, you're only paying 2%. You're only getting paid 2% as an advisor. So there is some balance. But also the SEC, FINRA are looking for all these things that come in. All the fees are supposed to be more efficient, cheaper. There's a lot of pressure on the industry. And that's a good thing. Because everybody's now watching for transparency. Everybody wants to understand how these are being priced. We now have uh, NAV vehicles which price. Almost every one of the major sponsors has a, a vehicle that prices either daily or at the end of two years or at the end of three years. And that's much better. Much harder on us, but much better. And we'll take some of those Well, Lisa, I think uh, all the large brokers, as to answer your question, are looking at the daily NAV product. You know, the chief concerns with the traditional non traded model at the brokerage side has been one, blind pool raises. Two, lack of liquidity, and three, the optics of the uh, large upfront loader. The daily NAV 
by the, our alternative strategies team within the retail and private wealth uh, groups have studied in detail. They've met with many of the core sponsors that are, are now presenting this product as the alternative. I think it goes a long way to addressing at least the optics of the upfront fee. Nick raises the other issue with the uh, present value of those fees change over time. It does significantly enhance the liquidity profile. Uh, it doesn't address the blind pool element. I think we're getting a groundswell of internal demand, interestingly enough, because our individual investors, the brokers, are seeing the successes that Nick and others are having with round trip exercises and non traded vehicles, particularly as Jackson mentioned, after 2008, where they're investing large sums of capital. Uh, it was played out to these uh, small investors that didn't have to look at the daily volatility. Uh, they could put it away, take a nice yield, and forget about it. Along the way, you had significant cap rate compression, and we've seen significant successes in, in specific asset classes as you've had round trip uh, liquidity events. And so that's putting a lot of pressure on the brokerage houses to re examine this model. I think the chief concerns that they have that remain are how do you compare the daily traded NAV? with a fully liquid alternative in the listed space. That's the chief concern, and then, of course, I think it's very difficult in that environment also to address their, their really the third level concern, which was the blind pool aspect. Well, let's kind of turn and 